Okay, for this lecture, we're going to talk about the postmenopausal female death spiral. I'll get my hands lined up with the webcam. Okay, so this is something that happens to a lot of postmenopausal women. It's totally preventable, so you don't want to spiral down and crash like so many of these unfortunate women. Okay, postmenopausal female dietary death spiral with calcium. A lot of postmenopausal women are locked into this death spiral and they can't get out of it. It's a vicious cycle, but we're going to show how to break out of it. Okay, she gets overweight because she's exposed to too many estrogenics and she's eating too much processed food, meat, and oils, all right? Just being overweight increases blood pressure. Then that same diet causes um, prediabetes or diabetes and the hormonal effects from that and the sodium effects, plus she's eating too much sodium from processed food, they're all driving her blood pressure up. So... She goes to the doctor, she gets put on a diuretic as a typical uh, first single drug treatment for a lot of uh, postmenopausal females, but guess what? The diuretic causes a loss of potassium in her urine. What's potassium? It's a vasodilator, it comes primarily from plants. So that's a problem, that could drive up her pressure. She'll also tend to void out more magnesium. That's a problem. Magnesium, like potassium, is a vasodilator that comes primarily from plants. So that can push up her blood pressure. Then how come it's given to treat blood pressure? Because it also is a diuretic. So what happens is it lowers the blood volume and that'll lower her blood pressure. The dehydration effect will dominate to lower blood pressure. But there's a problem. When you're dehydrated, your blood's a little thicker, a little bit more prone to clotting. You don't want clots. The reason people die is because of clots, by far, far, far more likely than from bleeding. Okay, we're going to see it's going to get a lot worse, but you can see how, where this is going. You know, you're not, you're not winning when you're losing your potassium and your magnesium. A lot of times she's stressed out, she's drinking caffeine, causes her to void more, lose more magnesium in the urine. The stress causes her to lose magnesium in the urine. Caffeine's a stress equivalent. She's often sleep deprived. Well, guess what? That's a stress equivalent. Raises the same hormones, the catecholamines, adrenaline, adrenaline and noradrenaline, and, and uh, cortisol. This leads to a net loss of magnesium in the urine. Magnesium is a really important vasodilator. Most people are deficient in magnesium. That's not good. Most common dietary deficiencies, potassium, magnesium, and fiber. Okay, so because she's low on those things, a little bit of a hypertensive effect. And like I said, she's never going to get better. You see how she's stuck into a spiral here where she's never going to get better? Okay, and we're just warming up. It's going to get worse. Then she's worried about osteoporosis. So she wants, she gets told to take a calcium supplement or she reads somewhere to take a calcium supplement or to eat, drink more milk, dairy or something. These are bad ideas. Okay, this is going to cause more magnesium loss in her urine. So, okay, then it's been shown women who take calcium in their diet from tablets and, and just their diet with over 1,400 milligrams per day of calcium or higher, they've got a 2.5 times increased all-cause mortality. So you get that? more than double the risk of death, okay? That's a big deal. Plus also, people tend to think too much about breast cancer. Obviously, breast cancer is a big deal, but what I'm trying to say is a woman who's postmenopausal is far more likely to die from a myocardial infarction, from a heart attack, than from uh, breast cancer. Okay, here's the paper. Actually, I got the paper on the next slide. Oh, I didn't get it to go. Sorry about that. So here's the paper, um, long-term calcium intake and rates of all-cause and cardiovascular mortality. So here's the key line down here. Um, with a dietary calcium intake above 1,400 milligrams per day, the ratio for all-cause mortality was 2.57. <laughs> okay, holy crap. Two and a half times increased risk of death. I mean, do you get that? She's trying to be healthy and she's more than doubling her risk of death. That's not good. Okay, uh, postmenopausal female dietary death spiral continues. Uh, we talked about the dairy. We talked about metabolic acidosis in the past um, from the dairy, from all animal protein. And then she's going to lose calcium because of the animal protein. And that's going to be coming from the bone, from the muscle. And there's even new theories about some of it being dietary absorption. Whatever. She's going to be losing calcium into urine. So that's called calciuria, increased calcium in the urine. 
and that's going to precipitate and start blocking up kidney tubules. It takes a lot of time to cause kidney failure, but over the course of about 50 years, she's going to be progressively knocking off her kidneys. Um, and people eat that all their life. So I start seeing abnormal kidney function with people in their 50s, um, super, super common in their 60s and 70s. So that's not good. You don't want to be in kidney failure. You need those kidneys. Um, in addition, sometimes the calcium precipitate into bigger chunks, and those cause kidney stones. It can be very painful. And, you know, you ask any radiologist who looks at abdominal CT, they see calcifications in the kidneys on a non contrast all the time, several times every single day, as well as kidney stones, super common. Okay, then she gets her vitamin D level checked, and the type they check, you know, the 25-hydroxy vitamin D in the liver, that one is routinely low in people. And like I said, McDougall never, virtually never prescribes for it. People should go out and get some sunshine, okay? It's not the same to get sunshine. It's much better to get sunshine than to take the, the oral uh, pill form. But the problem is they'll often take the pill form, and now they're getting more calcium absorption from the gut. And so now this lady has keeps on driving up her risk of premature death. We're going to explain it all on the next slide. Why is she such a high risk? for premature death. Oh, let's see, maybe it's on my other slide, we'll see. Okay, well anyway, she's deficient in the things she really needs, like fiber, potassium, magnesium, and vitamin C, but she's overloaded with sodium, with calcium, okay? And she's becoming progressively more thrombotic. In her mind, she's thinking, let me see, make sure I got the right slide. In her mind, she's thinking, you know, she needs her protein, she needs her calcium, she needs her good fats. No, those are the things that are killing her, okay, literally. It's like a Trojan horse. You increase your intake of animal protein, calcium, and so-called good fats, you increase your risk of premature death. Okay, um, let's see. Where did I have all my stuff? I had more stuff here. Let's see. All right, well, here's the Bantu women. It's good to have the Bantu women. So there's an epidemiology contrast. I previously talked about them, but they're highly relevant at this moment. They will typically have about nine kids, all right? So this lady doesn't drink any dairy. She only takes in about 350 milligrams of calcium per day. That's minuscule, all right? They don't have any problems with osteoporosis. She nurses each kid an average of two years, okay? I actually think American women should be taking much more time off from their jobs to nurse their babies. It's better for their children's IQs, better for their health, better for everything. Okay, so... Okay, here's this next slide. Now we're going to really get into what's happening here. Okay, so the Bantu woman, they live in South Africa, nine kids, nurse each one two years, 350 milligrams of calcium per day. No problem with osteoporosis, okay? Lots of westernized women are taking over 1,000 milligrams a day, all right? But the animal protein they ingest as well as phosphoric acid and other things is counteracting it. Um, so that's a key point. The problem is not more calcium intake. That's an important point. All right, the calcium supplements also are a bolus of calcium. Calcium is a clotting factor, so it increases the risk of blood clotting. We talked about it. Blood clotting is why people die primarily. You know, when you clot an artery in your heart, that's a heart attack. You clot one in your brain, there's a stroke. In your eye, blindness. In your ear, deafness, okay? So anyways, look at all these clotting risk factors. Number one, postprandial thrombotic blood because she gets a transient bolus of calcium that makes her blood more thrombotic. And then you won't even see it because if you check a blood level the next day, the blood will have a normal calcium by the time you recheck it. So that's one clotting risk factor. Then she's dehydrated. That's two clotting risk factors. Then she eats a high-fat diet, which increases clotting factor number seven. That's three clotting factors. Plus, it's sticking the LDL cholesterol together into low formation. That's four clotting risk factors. Then, because she's stressed out, increase fibrinogen, increase factor eight clotting factor, antihemophilic factor, increase von Willenbrand factor. That's seven increased clotting risk factors. Boom, no wonder she's got 2.5 times risk of all-cause mortality, death, like from myocardial infarction and stroke being increased. So what I'm saying is, no, think in a more simple way. Say, what was probably the healthiest thing in the world for my ancestors, Adam and Eve? Well, gee, they walked around all day, got a lot of sunshine, got a lot of exercise, spent time with their extended family in a social relationship, and ate a bunch of plant foods, okay? That's what humans are designed to do. To the extent we can mimic that, with the advantages of indoor heating and plumbing, of course, which are very nice to have, that makes us healthy. Not all this razzle-dazzle stuff, okay? So anyways, here's the references. Magnesium Miracle by Carolyn Dean. It's a little bit of a crazy book, but she does do a good job of going pretty thorough over the benefits of magnesium, problems with deficiencies. The, the downside of that book, she advertises herself too much. But it's still nice to have an audiobook. I like audiobooks to listen to in the car. 
Okay, here's the paper showing a 2.5 times increase all-cause mortality from the British Medical Journal there. There's the reference. Uh, Pritikin talked about the Bantu women and uh, so have others. And uh, anyways, hope that was helpful.